If you raise chickens on pasture, you know that every day can bring a new challenge. With 10 years of experience in poultry farming, Heifer USA's poultry production specialist, Sam Noble, is here to answer your questions. Hey Sam, how are you? I'm great, Kennedy. Are you ready to answer some of these questions? You betcha. In this video, Sam's going to answer the most frequently asked questions from viewers like you about how to care for chickens in the brooder, out on pasture in a giant chicken schooner, and how to protect your birds as they mature. Stay tuned until the end of this video when Sam will answer the single most frequently asked question on our channel. Let's head over to our chick brooder to get started. Our first question comes from Ken Brown 438 who asks, could you please explain what a brooder barn is? And we are just in the right place to explain that. A brooder barn is where we raise our young chicks. So it was a heated barn that we will have the chicks in from day one when they arrive until they leave at three weeks of age. So when they're younger, we want them to be nice and warm because they cannot keep up their own body heat by themselves. If we were to put them outside in 50 degree weather, they would not survive at all. It basically acts as a mother hen and does the brooding for us, where we give them food, water, heat, everything that they need when they're little babies. And all of that happens right here at the Heifer USA Automatic Brooder Barn. Sam, how many chickens does this hold at one time? So we currently raise 3,900 chicks in this barn. It is a 30 by 100 square foot barn. So that gives them plenty of space to roam around as well as keep them in a warm environment. This question comes from Drew Hill Farms, who asks, how much feed does your bulk feeder hold? So these feed tanks each hold 10 tons of feed. So typically we only fill them to about nine tons, but we can hold more if we happen to have a little bit of extra feed left over in the tank. The other grain carts that we have hold about three tons each. So each of these feed tanks on the end have an auger on them that we can dump feed directly out of the tank into the feed cart and bring it down to the chickens that are in our pasture. So these feeders hold feed for both the young chicks in the brooder and the older chicks out on pasture? Yes, the ones on the ends with the augers are for the older birds and the one in the center is the one that feeds directly into our chick brooder that you see behind us. And that leads into our next question, which comes from user Nicole Aldrich 4890 who asks, how does your automatic grain feeder work in the brooder? I don't see how the setup works with what appears to be straight pipes. Let's head into the brooder, see how that grain feeder works and answer Nicole's question. This is the inside of our chick brooder, but currently it's empty because this is the time of year where we clean, sanitize, and make any repairs or updates that we need in the brooder in anticipation of our next batch of chicks. Sam, can you give us a brief overview of how the feed for our chicks gets from that tank outside into these feeders in the brooder? Yeah, Kennedy. So basically our feed comes from the tanks that you already saw outside. And there is a white PVC tube that is connected to our middle tank that has an auger inside of it. And that auger is controlled by a motor. When we're running low on feed, it will cue the sensor to pull the feed from the outside tank up through the wall directly into our chick brooder and drop it down into our hopper and fill each individual automatic feed pan that we have. So this is a completely hands-free system. Yeah, we don't need to touch anything unless there's maintenance. We also have automated lines for watering chicks as well in here. That's a pretty awesome infrastructure bit because it means that you don't have to refill waterers every day like many people have to do in their chick brooders. We've got a question about our automated lines from Mark Robinson 8477. Can you share how you designed and or built your automated water lines? Who's the manufacturer and do you like them? The manufacturer of our water lines is Ziggity. Basically they're automated, they run off of a high pressure water and it drops the water down into each individual pecking nipple that you see on the water line and where bird just comes up and pecks it and it'll get a drop of water directly into its mouth. It's very minimal work for us. It is very clean on the litter. You're not wasting a lot of water. You're not spilling very much. It works really well for us. If you're interested in learning more about watering or feeding your chicks in your brooder, we've got a video linked in the description down below. We've got a question here from Fidel Secomar. Is there spray foam on the ceiling of this brooder? And is there radiant heat in the brooder floor? 
So yes, we do have spray foam, as you can see, up the sides of our walls, all the way to the ceiling. And that helps to contain the heat that we have. So if we didn't have insulation sprayed in here, definitely would be feeling a lot more drafts. It would be really cold. So basically that just helps us save a lot of money on propane costs. For the second part of that question, we do not have in-floor heating. That would be a huge bonus if you could, but we only have these brooder stoves that you see in the background behind us. That is the radiant heat that casts the heat over top of the birds and over the top of the shavings. Speaking of shavings, Jackie Young 3359 has a question about the flooring and the way that you cover the floor to keep your chickens safe and healthy. I'm on week five of raising my first batch of Cornish cross chickens and fingers crossed, all is going well. I noticed you mentioned using the deep litter method in the brooder, but I honestly don't think this breed would do well with that because they don't scratch like layer birds do. Do you have any idea if this works well for Cornish cross or does it cause more health issues than it solves? We do the deep litter method because we only have our chicks in our brooder from day one to week three. So we only have them in here for less than 21 days of their life. And so we just, a lot of times, we'll just kind of top dress between flocks, and so that's what that deep litter method is. We try to clean out every three batches, and that kind of helps our shavings stay fresh. Jackie also was curious whether you can turn your litter or clean it out while your chicks are in the brooder. She's heard that it could increase the chances of a disease caused by parasites called coccidiosis. Do you know if there's any truth to that, Sam? If you do have coccidia in your brooder environment, no, I would not recommend tilling while you have birds because it can increase the chances of your birds getting diseases like salmonella. You can get a lot of other viruses that are very bad for poultry. They are very susceptible, especially in their brooder. I would not recommend tilling while you have birds and when you're using the deep litter method. So if you do have a flock that was sick previously, I definitely would recommend doing a full clean out, disinfect, wash everything you can, you have a better chance for your next flock. Finally, we've got a question from Jean Clement Mumbusi 5070 who wants to know, how can I buy these feeders and drinkers in the US? So a lot of the stuff that I buy online comes from QC Supply. Our feed lines and water lines equipment, we supplied locally from Dixon Poultry Equipment. They're located in Russellville, Arkansas. So that is my preferred place to stop in and just kind of browse and shop, you know. That sort of thing if you're nerdy like me. <laughs> <laughs> if you're interested in purchasing your own versions of these supplies, of course, we'll have those linked in the description for you. We're gonna move out to the pasture to check out the schooners where our chickens are raised. If you don't know what a schooner is, don't worry. It looks like this. YouTube user Patty Dryer 9593 has a question about our schooner. She's raised pasture-raised chickens and never seen anything like our chicken schooners. Can you tell her a little bit about why we use this system? So these are our prairie schooners that we get through Featherman Equipment. You can find them online. They are a huge structure. They can hold 600 chickens. It really helps us to efficiently move 600 birds at one time, water them, feed them all in one go. When you're raising chickens on pasture, they can be vulnerable to predators. This question comes from James Justice 859 How do you protect chickens out in your fields if your flock is small? Do you use geese? So that is a really good question. Our first line of defense is our livestock guardian dogs that we have. Our second line of defense is the schooner structure itself. So we have larger welded wire that goes around the outside of the schooner. And then we have chicken wire that comes around closer to the inside of the schooner. And it kind of creates that second barrier. So the predators shouldn't be able to get in. But as you know, things like skunks, raccoons, bobcats, other animals can get inside just about anything that you try to keep them out of. So our third line of defense, we do use guardian geese inside of our schooners. They don't necessarily kill anything, but they do kind of intimidate things. They deter other animals from coming in. So that is how we protect our animals inside the chicken schooners that are our most susceptible species that we have here on the pasture. While the chickens are out on pasture, you've got to make sure that they are comfortable, fed, and watered. Now we've got a question from Eric Simmons, 4868. How do you handle freezing temperatures with your water system? And how do you keep the birds comfortable in the winter? 
We do not raise our broilers outside on the pasture in the winter because of this, but we do occasionally have to deal with freezing temps overnight. We are in the south, so we have a longer growing period and the days are typically warm. So chickens will only drink during the daylight. They don't typically drink at night because they're in their kind of sleep mode in the dark. If it does get to be freezing temps at night, we do have to unplug the water, drain the lines out, and then in the morning when it gets up above freezing temperature, which is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, we plug them back in, the waters fill in, the chickens have water, so it's pretty easy. If you're raising poultry in a schooner or a mobile chicken tractor, you'll need more than just the area it takes up on your land. Andy Jones, 6361, wants to know how many acres total we have for our pastured poultry operation. So in this one particular pasture, I would estimate we probably have around 30 acres of land here. We have seven total chicken schooners. There's only three in this one pasture. So that lasts us about the entire year that we have in our poultry season. So we use just about every square inch of this as much as we can to fertilize this land for the other species that we have on the ranch. While that pasture is resting, it's really important to keep your chickens off of it. We've got a question from NotGiven911 who wants to know how long it takes pasture to regrow once you move the schooner off of it. Can you have multiple schooners in the same pasture as long as you stagger them enough for the land to recover? I would recommend at least 60 days minimum of rest period when this schooner is going to be sitting on this land. I would recommend not coming back until 60 days later and that would kind of vary. If it's rained a lot, you're going to have really fast regrowth and recovering. If it's in the summer, you might want to just kind of take a look, visualize what your pasture is doing, what the ground is doing, if it's recovered itself. So we have enough land here to not pass over the same spot for an entire year. When the chickens poop and fertilize on the ground, they will release enough nitrogen in that ground for it to be good for an entire year if you did have enough land for that. If you want to purchase your own schooner like this one, this next question is for you. This comes from Butterfly Queen 9792 who wants to know, where can I buy this fenced chicken coop? So we got ours from Featherman Equipment. They have a website. You can also call them and talk to them if you have questions. They have multiple different sizes, which is really great. We also recommend the ones from Pasture Tech. They have a similar structure that has no brace bars in it like these Prairie Schooner style do. That way you're not tripping over bars, you're not stepping over things, especially while you're feeding and watering your chickens. Now let's head back to the studio to answer your questions about the finances and logistics of raising pastured poultry. In this section, we're going to be tackling a lot of questions on our Raising 20,000 Chickens on Pasture video. If you haven't seen this video, it's linked in the description below. YouTube user Joel Ayande 7584 asks, how much do 10,000 chicks cost? Sam, can you help Joel out? So this upcoming season, we will be paying $1.22 per chick. We get our chicks from Keith Smith Hatchery and they come in bulk. So we tend to pay a little bit less than the average person who might be getting fewer chickens. If you went to get chickens at say Tractor Supply Company or a local store, do you have a good estimate of that? Their pricing varies a lot and you might not find as much broiler chickens as you would the layer chickens at a supply store, but you can typically order them through there. I know layers are probably around four to $5. So if you want to scale up your operation and instead of buying 10,000 chicks, you want to buy 20,000 chicks, YouTube user MonirKhan370 asks, how much do 20,000 chicks cost? Yeah, so what we would pay at that $1.22 per chick, it would be just under $25,000 for our entire season if we were to grow 20,000 chickens on pasture. So we have since scaled that up to a little over 30,000 chickens. So you can kind of do the math on what we might be paying this year for chicks. <laughs> yeah, we get lots of questions about our profit margins on our chickens. And we'd like to remind you that we raise animals in bulk. Lots of other farms raise smaller batches of animals. So keep in mind that our prices may look a little different than yours. With that said, we've got a question from Joseph Hutzelak who wants to know, what's your pricing on chickens and what's your profit margin? So our pricing that does not include labor and any of the other things that kind of go around it, like infrastructure, 
is about $5 per bird. So that would be feed and the cost of the bird itself. We raise our broilers from day one of age and we process them approximately seven weeks of age. So that $5 goes through that whole span of their life for each individual bird. In terms of our profit margins, that is difficult to compare to other farmers and calculate because we do work through Grassroots Farmers Co-op and they handle a lot of the marketing and that whole fun side for us. If you want to take a look at their website, it's grassrootscoop.com and you can see how much we sell our chickens and chicken parts for, including whole birds. The whole chicken itself currently is a little under $30 per bird. Well, that leads into our next question from Andy Jones 6361 who asks, how do you market your birds? I actually don't. I am just a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> As a member of Grassroots Farmers Co-op, Heifer USA is responsible for raising livestock. Grassroots takes care of the marketing, shipping, distribution, and all of those complicated things that can really weigh farmers down. Because of those services, Sam and our other farmers are able to focus on the health and well-being of our animals. And I bet that's a relief for you, Sam. Yeah, so I really would struggle if I had to balance both farming and the marketing side and the sales and everything, finding customers, it would be way more than I could handle, especially at the scale that we raise birds at. I really like to be outside working with the birds, doing the chores. That's where I'm loving my job. So it's really nice that Grassroots is able to kind of take away that whole side of things and marketing and finding where birds need to be going after they leave our farm. Our next question comes from Mr. Nobody, 5028. Is there a hard and fast rule for how many broilers a single person can tend to at one time? Unfortunately, the answer is you'll know it when you hit it. So that really depends on your setup, your infrastructure, the equipment that you have, including the types of feed and water you have, how many birds you are able to hold inside your coop. So if you have a large structure like we do that can hold 600 chickens in, then you can get a lot done with fewer people in that one schooner. It takes us maybe 20 minutes per schooner of 600 birds to move them, do the chores, feeding, watering them. We have automated waters, which really goes a long way as well. Whereas if you were to have the Salton style tractors or the Siskovich style tractors that are a lot smaller, if you were to have six of those with 100 birds each, that would greatly increase your chore time because you're removing six different structures, you're feeding six different structures. So if you're taking a long time, you might want to think about switching things up if you're looking to scale up your production. If you are looking to scale up your operation, we have lots of recommendations for equipment, infrastructure, and techniques that can help you streamline your process. We'll include some video links down in the description below, where you can check out other recommendations from Sam and our farmers here at Heifer USA. We've come to our final question of today's session, and this is the single most commonly asked question in the comments of our YouTube videos. Though many of you have asked this very same question, today we're answering Aditya Dubi 9026 who asks, what do you feed your chickens? That is a really good question and yeah, we do get it a lot. So it does matter what you feed your chickens so that they can have a good growth rate, good egg production, whatever market you're into. So basically what we do is we have feed that is delivered to us from a feed mill on a feed truck. We buy it in bulk from Hostetler's Feed Mill in Missouri. We pay to have Ralco ration the feed for us. So essentially we tell them what sort of ingredients we have access to from our feed mill. Ralco comes up with a ration that would be good for our specific needs. Mix it up at the feed mill, bring it down on a feed truck and unload it directly for us. So it's everything's perfectly mixed up for us. I'm sure that that's a lot easier than formulating your own feed, which many of you have asked about. If you want to save money feeding your chickens while ensuring they get the proper nutrition that they need, check out this video. Or take a tour of a farm raising 30,000 chickens on pasture every year. 